Believe it or not, there's something worse than not getting results in Google Ads. It's spending all of that money only to find that the traffic and conversions that you generated are junk and spam. In fact, one research study found that over 27% of the traffic on the internet is from non-human bots. The money that your business is spending in Google Ads is too valuable to waste. In this video, I'm going to share a handful of simple things that you can do to make sure that your investment in PPC isn't being squandered. And stick around to the end because I have a free cheat sheet that I'm going to give you to help you get the results as you market your business online. If that sounds interesting, let's discuss. Hey friends, my name is Scott Redgate and if you're new to this channel, I'm passionate about helping small businesses make more and spend less and show you that you have what it takes to manage your own online marketing campaigns. Today I'm going to review several things that you can do to prevent invalid traffic and junk conversions in Google Ads. Before we jump into the slides, I'd be honored if you could hit that like button and subscribe to my channel so I can keep making content just like this. All right, let's dive in. All right, so we are going to talk about how to prevent junk traffic and leads inside of Google Ads, and we're even going to have some discussion on how to do this inside the new Performance Max campaigns. So if you own a website and you have a lead form or a contact us form, you've probably seen a message that looks like this. We can get you to the first page of Google for a one-time fee. Please PayPal this address. This is spam. Um, these messages leave us frustrated, especially if we spent money to get this lead and it's registering as a conversion inside of Google Ads. So this is also classified as invalid traffic and here's how Google defines this. Invalid traffic is any activity that doesn't come from a real user with genuine interest. It can be accidental clicks caused by intrusive ad implementations, fraudulent clicking by competing advertisers, advertising botnets, and more. So the feedback loop looks something like this. You receive invalid clicks in Google Ads. Bots or spammers crawl your websites. Bots or spammers convert by doing something like filling out your lead form or contact, contact us form, and then it counts as a conversion inside of Google Ads. Now, if you have automated bidding set up, the Google Ads system, especially in Performance Max, may actually spend more because it's registering as a conversion, um, which would lead to more invalid clicks in Google Ads. So I threw out the question to several Google Ads experts on Twitter and asked, hey, what are some things that you're doing to stop invalid clicks um, and spam traffic and junk conversions and received a response that linked to a thread from Tom Meredith from Tier 11. And he coined this cycle or something like this as the feedback loop of doom. Again, invalid clicks lead to bot or spammers crawling your websites. The conversions happen, that counts as a conversion, and then the system spends more as a result. So we're gonna talk about a few things that you can do to cut down on this traffic getting to your website and converting, which is causing you to spend more money. So the first thing that we're gonna talk about is location targeting. So inside of Google Ads, and this is a screenshot from a Performance Max campaign, you obviously wanna select a location that your customers are in. So if you're a local business, typically that will mean selecting the city or the county or the region that you're in. But what you'll want to keep notice here is in this target section. So on the top, you've got presence or interest, which says people in regularly in or have shown interest in your targeted locations. And of course, that's the recommended option inside Google Ads. Or there's this presence one right here, which says people in or regularly in your targeted locations. So I want to show you what happens if you select something like presence or interest. So this is the screen in Google Ads if you click the location tab for a particular campaign. So again, this is a Performance Max campaign. And you'll see here it has the option for targeted locations. That's the area that we are specifically targeting. But if you click this option and you select matched locations, you'll actually see 
other locations that your ad is serving in. So in this example, the United States is showing, which is my targeted location, but then we're actually receiving clicks inside Mexico in U Ukraine, which is not where my customer base is. So a lot of those match locations will go away if you select the presence option in the location settings for your campaign. The next thing that we're going to discuss is something that everyone is familiar with, even if you don't know the name of it, and that's CAPTCHA. So CAPTCHA, and I did not know what this stood for, stands for Completely Automated Public Testing Test to Tell Computers and Humans Apart. So CAPTCHAs help protect you from spam and password decryption by asking you to complete a simple test that proves that you're a human and not a computer. And so that's from Google support right there. So what that looks like is typically when you're on a contact us form or a lead generation form, you're signing up for a particular service. Um, many times it will look like this where it's simply a box that you have to check to verify that you're a human. Um, you'll see a lot of it from Google or this one right here, which is called HCAPTCHA. All right, so we're gonna talk about form spam protection and there's a couple of things that you can do here. Depending on the Contact Us form plugin that you're using, right now I'm using the simple contact form plugin inside of WordPress, typically you can go into the settings and you'll see a couple of options that look like this. So you definitely would wanna have these boxes checked to help prevent the spam from getting through. So here's something else that you can do that's relatively easy. You could create a hidden field in your form, and so this is called the honeypot strategy, um, that if text is in that field, the form is not able to submit. So typically what happens is when spam bots come to your website, they look to fill out every field that they can find. So you can trick them um, so that they fill out the information but they're never able to hit that submit button because in your form configuration, you have it set to, if there's any text inside of this field, do not allow the submit button to be hit. So that's another easy thing that you can do. All right, so here's a bonus tip from Tom Meredith, who I quoted before, uh, where he saw success in preventing invalid clicks in spam leads by increasing the complexity of his lead form. So he made it 15 fields long with a variety of text fields, drop down, selection options, etc. And so he saw that he saw success with this. It stopped bots from filling out the form, but humans were undeterred. So this is something, this is an option for you. I would definitely recommend testing it because I can talk from personal experience. If a form is too long, many times I will just bounce. So if you're asking for more information besides, you know, name, email address, and maybe one or two two more options, um, you know, I'm going to leave. I'm not going to hit the submit button on that form. You've created too much friction. You've created too much work for me. So this is something I definitely recommend testing, but it's good to see that he's seen some success with it. So the next tip that I have for you is setting up a website monitoring service or bot protection service. So this is the stat that I referenced at the very beginning of the video that said that 27.7% of online traffic is from bad bots. So think of these website monitoring services or bot protection services as a guard um, in front of a security gate for your website that stop a lot of this traffic from ever getting to your website. So if you stop that bot or that spammer from ever getting to your website, they're not gonna be able to fill out that lead form which could count as a conversion inside of Google Ads. So here's a couple of options, Data Dome, Cloudflare, but if you do a quick Google search for uh, bot management, website monitoring service, you'll see dozens and dozens of options to choose from. So with this next one, you'll definitely want to confirm with your region's privacy laws that it's something that you're okay to do, but you could also set up a hidden field on your form to capture the IP address um, from the user that is submitting it. So just like we talked about before with setting up a hidden field, a honeypot to, to stop the bots from being able to fill out the form, this is something that you could do to collect the IP address of the spammer. So in Google Ads, you have the ability to set an IP exclusion for a lot of different campaigns, which would stop that spammer from ever seeing your ads and being able to click on it in the future. So yes, that is the future, that's not past tense, but from this point forward, you can stop that spammer from getting to your website. 
Now, quick note, IP exclusions are not available for video campaigns, app campaigns, smart display discovery campaigns, and currently the new Performance Max campaigns. So they are not eligible there, but they currently are eligible inside of search campaigns. So Google does a really good job at hiding this, but you do have the ability to troubleshoot invalid clicks and let Google know that you're concerned about invalid activity on your ads. And so they've got several options for you to choose from. Here's the link below, um, but you have the ability to notify Google. And if it's really bad, um, you may even be able to get a credit on your account for the activity that you spotted if Google is able to verify it. So last but not least, I threw out the question on Twitter to several Google Ads experts asking them for what tips that they have uh, to prevent spam leads in Google Ads and I received a response from Minichem and I saying offline conversions in audience signals. And so I'm gonna talk very quickly about audience signals because I think it is a great, great, great recommendation. So. So what is an audience signal? An audience signal is the starting point that you inform Google inside of performance max campaigns about who's most likely to convert. So in other words, you can give Google first party data, which is like your customer email address list, or you could select from custom segments that they have available. Um, and Google uses that information to start there and then look for more conversions from from that starting point inside of Performance Max. So let's say a lot of your customers have similar behavioral trends, right? Or they're a, a similar demographic or something like that. So Google will use that as the starting point inside of Performance Max, which could in turn limit the amount of visibility that Google is giving to those invalid traffic sources or spammers because for them to show the ad, at least at the start, you're giving it a strong signal of this person who looks at the ad needs to be in this demographic or this type of customer behavior or interested in this. Um, so it could be a proactive way for you to stop showing it to those invalid traffic sources. I hope those insights were helpful for you and I'm curious. Let me know in the comments below what other tips you've seen success with to lower the click fraud in your advertising account. And since you've stuck around to the end, I have a free gift that I wanna give you. It's my seven day online marketing jumpstart PDF. You can get it at scottredgate.com slash jumpstart. If you're looking for a simple cheat sheet that can get your business results, this is a document for you. It's completely free and after you complete the steps outlined in this document, not only will your website have a solid foundation to generate more leads or more revenue, but you'll have a lot more confidence that you can manage your own digital marketing without hiring an agency. Thank you so much for watching this video. Until next time.